Okay, we're back once again, and we're computing the MLE for linear regression that we wanted to, right? So we we had we formed this. We found that we needed to minimize this this function of w to get the the MLE for w, and we took the gradient, set it equal to zero to find critical points, and then we ended up with this this wonderful, this lovely expression here, nice and simple, linear algebra expression, and we wanted to invert this A transpose A inverse. So if you know your linear algebra, then you may know that this A transpose A is invertible, assuming, so it's invertible if the columns of A are linearly independent. So let's assume this and um, in order to, to be able to invert this thing and and so 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 we'll assume this so that so we can invert this under these assumptions and we can solve for this w. So we get W equals this A transpose A inverse times A transpose Y. And um, this thing, by the way, let me just, as an aside, mention this quantity here, A, A plus, we usually often it's denoted by A plus, or A dagger, is this A transpose A inverse times A transpose. transpose. And it's called the pseudo, the Moore Penrose pseudo inverse. It's a beautiful linear algebra um, thing. It's sort of like an inverse. It's sort of like the closest thing to inverting A in some sense. A is see the problem A is not um, A is not invertible because where's A? There, there's A. A is this design matrix thing. And this was there's it's n there's n rows, so it's n by d and by d because each of these our input points was in d dimensional space and you know this is this isn't even necessarily a square matrix so in general this is this is not going to be vertible so even though we might have liked to you know the, the intuition it's in some sense would would have liked to you know to solve a w equals y for w but we would have to invert a to do that and so so we can't do that and the pseudo inverse so we could have written this expression here um, this this is what is equivalent to just you know rewriting this using this new definition a the pseudo inverse of a times y so that's the same thing And so it's sort of, in some sense, the closest thing to inverting A, in some, in a certain sense. Okay, so that's good. We got a critical point, and now let's let's show, let's see if we can show that it's a minimum, or yeah, that, that it's a minimum, and that will show that it's a maximum of the log of the um, of the log likelihood, and therefore maximum of the likelihood. So to show that uh, we have a minimum. In a multivariable problem, we need to take the Hessian. So the, the Hessian is the matrix of second derivatives. So the Hessian, sometimes we write this way, of a function, or H, is the matrix of second derivatives. So, you know, it's derivative with respect to the second derivative with respect to x1, and second derivative with respect to, um, well, I didn't leave myself space here. I'll just write it this way. Partial with respect to xi partial with respect to xj of f. So the ith j, the ij entry of this matrix is is this second derivative of f. 
okay. Often we write matrices like this, you know, this sort of notation. Okay, so let's compute this Hessian thing. So in order to do that, we need to compute the uh, the second derivatives, and we've already computed the gradient, so we're halfway there. And ah, okay, so right, we can. So there's another a trick we can use here. We can so this gradient or the Hessian now of this L thing with respect to W is is A transpose A. I claim that's equal to A transpose A because this, well let me let me write it down here. I claim this is true because the gradient of L was the was the, the column vector of the first derivative of the first derivatives, and let's take the derivative of this with respect to say w j. So this was what was it? It was minus a transpose y plus a transpose a w. This is a constant with respect to w, so it's zero, and and this is a combination of the columns of A transpose A with coefficients W. So this is W1 times, uh, let me just say, first column, first column of A transpose A, W2 times the second column, and so on, whatever, WN, I guess, or WD times the dth column. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to wj, we just get the jth column of A transpose A. And so the matrix of secondary, so that would, so that gives us the, um, so that gives us one column in this matrix, this Hessian matrix. And, and so it gives us the jth column, in fact. This is the jth column of A transpose A. And it's just the jth column, because this is, well, just by the definition of the gradient, the gradient is, is the column vector. So this is partial with respect to Wj, partial with respect to W1. and so on. Partial with respect to wj, partial with respect to wd. And that is the jth column of this, this matrix. Or the jth row. I mean, it's a symmetric matrix, so I guess the way I wrote it, it looks like the jth, you know, the transpose of the jth row or something, but it's a symmetric matrix. So, so this is also the jth column, and so it's equal to the jth column of A transpose A, and that holds for all columns J, so we get this result. The Hessian is A transpose A. And now, we, so we wanted to show that the Hessian, we, so to show that it's a minimum, we need the Hessian to be positive semi-definite. We would want it to be strictly positive definite, it, to guarantee a unique minimum, but for it to be a minimum, we just need it to be positive semi-definite, and in fact, A transpose A is positive semi-definite. And so therefore, this uh, this solution, well, we got it here. W, this critical point, well, it was it was the unique critical point, right? So the the, the and since this is a positive semi-definite Hessian, that means that that critical point, well, th this is uh, this is the Hessian at, at any W really, and so it, in particular, it's the Hessian at, at that W, and so that that implies that W, that W M L E. Let's put this in a good something green, that's good. 
So WMLE equals this pseudo inverse times A. So let's write out A transpose A inverse times A transpose times Y. Right, it's it's the MLE because we it's the minimizer. Back up to here. We we minimized this function L. This is a function of W. And minimizing this is the same as maximizing, if we include the minus signs, maximizing minus that, and the constant makes no difference. And maximizing that is the same as maximizing e to that because e is um, is order preserving right e is like you know like this so x less than y implies e to the x is less than e to the y and this is just a constant again so so minimizing this is the same as maximizing the likelihood function and that is what we wanted to do to get the MLE. We wanted to find a maximizer. And in fact, it's equal in this case. There's a unique mac maximizer. And it equals back down here, where is it? Equals this beautiful, beautiful quantity. So in the course of doing this, let's just point out um, a couple of things that we. So, so that's our solution. And um, a sort of interesting, well, one little byproduct we got here was these nice facts about the gradient of. Um, so th these are nice little tricks to use when you're working with gradients in linear algebra. The the the, the two tricks that I used here, well, I guess I wrote them here. These two tricks. So those are those are nice some nice little tricks that you can use, and also a more sort of more general interesting thing here is that this L remember L we also could have it was it was equal to this dot product but that was just equal to the square of the norm so let's go back down here so L was one half y minus a w L was you know it's a function of w squared and we minimized this with respect to W, had a unique minimizer. So minimizing this is the same as, that's the same as minimizing just the norm, the, you know, the square root of that. This is the Euclidean norm. This is the Euclidean distance between Y and AW. I'll just put it this way. D is the Euclidean distance. So this W that we solved for, this is the the this minimize it's the W that gets you as close as possible to Y. So this is a very intuitive interpretation of what the MLE is doing here, or and, and in more generally what the pseudo inverse does. The pseudo inverse. Remember, we talked about how, um, you know, in some sense, we we might have liked to solve this a w equals y, but we can't. We can't because well, in general, we can't because y might not be in the the span here, or you know, the possible values that this could achieve. But we what we do, what the pseudo inverse does, is it gets you as close as possible. It gives you the W that gets A times W as close as possible in Euclidean distance to Y. So that's a nice, nice intuition for what this is doing. All right, so that's it. We got the MLE for linear regression, and you could use this. You could plug this into the the formula, and um, that would give you the function to predict as we talked about.